In this video, I'm going to give you a very basic and very brief introduction to the steps that you should take when you're analyzing an IR spectrum. We're going to be using the spectrum of one hexanol, which I got from the NIST website. When you're analyzing an IR spectrum, the very first thing that you should do is begin by drawing two lines, one line at the 1500 wave number mark, and then a second line at the 3000 wave number marks. So we want to divide our spectrum up into three different parts. We're going to analyze these three different parts separately. So the first thing that I want you to do, um, focusing on this 1500 mark, I want you to ignore every single thing that is to the right of this 1500 mark. Most of the time, we're just always going to completely ignore this part of the spectrum. This part of the spectrum we refer to as the fingerprint region. It is due to the stretching and bending of single bonds, and our molecules have tons and tons of single bonds. So that means that this part of the spectrum is going to have a lot of peaks in it. As you can see, this one had a lot of peaks in it, and it's usually not useful for us to attempt to understand and analyze every single one of those peaks. Of course, there will be times when it is important for us to analyze the fingerprint area, but remember this is a basic and brief introduction. So in most situations, we will not be analyzing the fingerprint area. I do want to say, as a side note, if you are matching spectra, so let's say you have this particular spectrum right here that you're looking at and you're trying to match it to a reference, then typically in that situation, we do want to focus on the fingerprint area and, and match the fingerprint areas of a spectrum to a reference spectrum. That matching process, we do rely heavily on fingerprint. But if we are just analyzing, like trying to understand what functional groups are in this molecule, if we're just analyzing, then usually the fingerprint area has way too much information. So we're going to uh, ignore everything to the right of the 1500 line, and then now we're going to go over to this first area of the spectrum that I marked off, everything that is to the left of the 3000 wave number line. This is the area that I like to call uh, the area of special hydrogens. So we do want to pay attention to this area. We do not want to ignore it. This is the part of the spectrum where we are going to find hydrogens that are part of OH groups, hydrogens that are part of amines, terminal hydrogens in alkynes, and sometimes if we're lucky, if we have a vinylic hydrogen, that would be a hydrogen that's on a carbon-carbon double bond. If we have a vinylic hydrogen, we might be able to see that as well. It's hard to see the vinylic hydrogens, so don't be surprised if you have a molecule that has a vinylic hydrogen and you can't see it over here because it's hidden by something that's pretty normal. But the OH, NH, and terminal alkyne hydrogens are always very identifiable in this area. We know because we know from the name of this that this is an alcohol, and we also know that oxygen, hydrogen bonds, they tend to give peaks that are very strong and broad. Not always, but that's definitely a characteristics that we see here. Nitrogen-hydrogen bonds are also broad. They just tend to not be strong, so they could be medium or weak in intensity. And our carbon uh, terminal alkyne, carbon-hydrogen bonds, they are very spiky and sharp. So that's what we're going to be looking for in this area. And that's really all that we're looking for is these three things. I personally don't even try to look for the vinylic hydrogens uh, unless I know for sure that I have an alkene and I'm expecting it to be um, of, this, of this particular arrangement. So once I've analyzed the area of the special hydrogens, then we're going to turn to the area in the middle of 1300 and 1500. This is where we find our, you know, uh, normal functional groups like the carbonyl group, the carbon-carbon double bond, the carbon-carbon triple bond, which as a reminder, you may not be able to see because it might be invisible to the IR if the molecule is symmetric. And uh, also here we can find carbon, nitrogen, triple bonds as well. All of these peaks, if, if the molecule has these functional groups and it is asymmetrical, all of these peaks are easy to see because they are strong um, or medium intensity. They're very sharp. They're all very characteristic. So you should never have any issues finding these peaks if they're present. The one thing that you do want to look out for and what's showing up in this particular molecule are the carbon-hydrogen bonds. The carbon-hydrogen bonds will sit right around 3,000. They could be a little to the left. In this case, they're a little to the right. Remember that our molecules always have these carbon-hydrogen bonds. Um, so I, 
in general, once you find your carbon hydrogen bonding peaks, you just kind of want to ignore them because they don't give us a lot of information about the molecule. Of course, our molecule has carbon hydrogen bonds. We already know that. So again, your carbon hydrogen peaks um, are going to be right around the 3000 mark. They might be a little bit inside this area. Don't confuse them because in this case, they're very strong. Don't confuse them with one of our important functional groups. All of these functional groups tend to um, show up more in the middle of this area, not really encroaching on either one of the ends right here.